from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering GitLab Commit 2020. Brought to you by GitLab. Hi, and welcome to CUBE's coverage of GitLab Commit 2020. We're here in San Francisco, actually the first CUBE event of the year, and I'm Stu Miniman, here with John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, one of our main CUBE hosts. Uh, John, always great to kick off the year with you, and of course, we're digging in on the developer world, cloud native, uh, nothing better than you know, the, the opening keynote uh, talks about, you know, th there's the line we've been talking for years, software is eating the world, and what are the ripples that are happening on. So, John, yeah. great to see you, and how come it's so cold it's here too, in San Francisco? I mean, coldest, I could be back in Boston. Coldest winter, <laughs> every spring was the summer San Francisco, but it's not summer anymore, but Stu, it's football, playoffs, Patriots aren't in, so sorry to hear that our path didn't make it. But great Great to see you. Um, I think one of the things this year in 2020, a new decade, 10 years of theCUBE, looking back, we have been on all the major developer waves since 2010. We jumped on the Hadoop wave with Cloudera. We saw the beginning of that wave of OpenStack to cloud, um, Kubernetes, containers, the whole nine yards. We, we've been in the developer community, but this year, Cloud Native not only is going to continue that expansion of, of developer cube action, but the cross connect with mainstream. And this is to me the biggest trend of the next 20 years is going to be the open systems model of cloud. Just like the open systems interconnect in the 80s created a whole new computer industry, uh, changed the landscape, changed the value proposition. This year, I think we're going to start to see real visibility of value creation where the developers are not just the cliche of the value proposition, that's the cliche, oh yeah, developers, developers, developers. No, no, this is a whole nother game change. With cloud scale, with data, with AI, you're seeing, again, the importance of this. So I think cloud native represents, to me, that next generation, because with multi-cloud, there are new criterias out there for success, new requirements. Um, same game, right, software, whole new, whole new dynamic. Networking, Stu, compute. Yeah. Yeah, uh, John, and I, I love actually, I think this was a great show to help us kick it off um, because you, you talked about those mega waves out there. We've been watching the growth of some of the huge platforms. Uh, AWS is on the keynote stage this morning. Uh, Google is doing uh, the closing uh, keynote, and of course, one of the major acquisitions uh, you know, in the relatively recent past was Microsoft buying GitHub. Um, and so we know that developers are so important, but the message we heard from GitLab is it's not about silos anymore. Uh, they said not only the dev, the SEC, and the ops, but finance and marketing. Yeah. Everyone needs to get on the same page. GitLab's vision, of course, is that everyone should be using the same tools. That was uh, something that I heard, that we, we both heard last year at Ansible Fest, that if you're in the same tools, sharing the same information, in the same communication channels, uh, you're going to be able to move fast, and that is what, what companies need to do. They need to be able to re react fast, the business to be able to move, those uh, software cycles uh, need to be shortened, and that's the, the mission and the, the big goal that GitLab have has, uh, and I think it's representative of the wave we've been seeing. Let's get into the keynote analysis, but before we get that, I want to, you brought up a point about GitHub. I think there's a real dynamic of GitHub being acquired by Microsoft for many reasons. One is, Microsoft's got this uh, cloud called Azure, and not the only cloud in town. Amazon has AWS, and so multi-cloud is going to be a theme we're going to see more and more of. And so this idea of open and transparent community and open source is interesting in a world where everyone's siloing. I mean, let's face it, GitHub is owned by Microsoft. LinkedIn was acquired by Microsoft. You're starting to see the walled garden world come back again where data is really valuable. And so what's interesting to see is you're seeing a company with GitLab, really one of the first ones to say, hey, you know what, we're going to be anti-walled garden. We're going to be open, we're going to be transparent. And again, integrated platform. The cloud is demanding companies have integration requirements that are well above what we saw years ago. And this is now a new table stake. This to me is the real walk away. What's your thoughts on, on the GitLab keynote and those industry dynamics? Yes, yeah, so, so some great points there, John. Uh, right, first of all, open, fully open, uh, you know, the, the CEO uh, and the CMO, some of the things that we're talking about is sometimes 
the team doesn't know who's doing the contribution because they're getting regular contribution. They said, hey, I, I didn't see them in the group. Oh, wait, that's a customer, that's a partner, someone from the outside is doing it. Fully open and transparent and remote. They now have over 1,100 employees. Four years ago, there were nine of them, and it is fully remote. Uh, actually, little, do a little compare and contrast. You talk about Amazon. John, how many people do we know that have joined Amazon, and the first thing you do is you move to Seattle because that's, that's just where they have. Now, of course, they've got multiple locations. They've got you know, thousands of employees down in DC, in Massachusetts, in New York City, all over the place. But the core decision making, even though they are very distributed, you know, it, 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 Seattle is where everything happens. That's where most of the people uh, live. So GitLab, not only is the company remote, but that's the tooling that they've built uh, really is to enable people to work wherever they are. Uh, from GitLab standpoint, they said, hey, you know, we have, uh, you know, one of our software people, she lives in New Zealand and she has her own power. She's completely off the grid except for her internet. As long as she has internet, she can contribute to the team and participate in the building of GitLab. Uh, so it's fascinating, you know, we, we've talked for years about the future of work and how that happens. So the tooling yeah. as an enablement, not only to allow everybody to work together, but work together wherever they are in that remote capability. And it is very challenging. Uh, you know, we watched Zoom IPO last year and they're trying to help uh, with, with that whole wave. But we know that there's a, there's a challenging dynamic of being able to work wherever you are. So they brought up some stats, interesting scale and integration are a big theme. Looks like GitLab's getting it. They made some good calls. We in, have integration, very friendly integration, very open. And they're essentially consolidating a lot of the different tool chains out there. You look at Jenkins and other things out there from continuous integration, variety through, and now mainstream. They got 1,100 employees, okay? They got a valuation of $2 billion. They just raised $436 million. They have cash on hand of 350 million, and they're going to do revenue. So you have essentially scale in GitLab with an integration story, which the cloud guys are being forced. That's my opinion. Do you agree with that? And do you think that GitLab can continue the pace of growth given where they're at. Well, John, they have something that everybody wants. It's that that uh, recurring revenue. So in February 2020, they will pass the 100 million of ARR, uh, and they've announced that they're going to IPO later this year. Uh, we're going to have the CEO on later. I'm a little surprised how fast they are looking to IPO, John. Uh, we've seen so many companies that not only do they do big raises, but it's not 100 million dollars. It's two or 300 million dollars. You know, when do you have profit? when do you go public? So I'm a little curious why there's almost a race uh, for GitLab uh, to go IPO, uh, but absolutely they, they, they are catching a lot of these waves. Um, when GitHub was taken off the table, boy did I see Google moving fast to work closer with them. Uh, it's no coincidence that Amazon is here um, because there's been a little bit of concern from GitHub as to, oh, if I'm doing GitHub, does that mean that I'm kind of being pushed closer to Microsoft Azure, as you said, that, that cloud. Uh, I've read recently GitHub's trying to make sure that they stay independent. We know the GitHub team. And the, the other big thing we saw is GitLab, about three years ago, they really differentiated themselves. They are not just a GitHub alternative. You talked about Jenkins. The CICD is a huge piece of what they're doing. The source code management and CICD putting those together are the core of what they're doing, but they're trying to be a single tool chain. Boy, when I look at the you know, the mesh of tooling uh, that GitLab uh, kind of is poking at a little bit. We know a lot of these companies, some of them are public, some of them are unicorns, uh, you know, to say that, oh, well, we're, we're going to be all of your security chaining. We know how deep and, and gnarly the security world is, um, but GitLab being open, they're going to partner with all of these environments. It's not that you can only use the GitLab pieces, but uh, the audacious goal to say that they are going to be kind of the one tool chain to rule them all um, is a good goal. Uh, I think we, I'm, I'm hugely supportive of my entire career of trying to get rid of silos, um, but we know that uh, it, you're still going to have you know, corner cases and use cases that I'm going to need to go deeper. I'm still going to use those best of breeds. And that's one of the things we're going to look at this year, John, that, that platform, just like I could go all in on AWS, but I'm still going to use lots of tools on Amazon. Uh, and I'm going to use other yeah. clouds. What's your take on, uh, great analysis by the way, what's your take on as cloud native becomes multi-cloud, um, where you got Edge developing, we got Outpost, you're seeing Azure with their stuff, Outpost is Amazon. Um, you now have more pressure on speed and agility than ever before. How does GitLab's story 
play well into that. Uh, and to, as enterprises have to be faster, not just enterprises, service providers, there's other new companies doing more cloud and on-premises and edge, AKA multi-cloud too. Yeah, so I actually, I, I loved the, the problem statement that they, that they nailed uh, with talking about the tool chain that's out there is they said more than 50% of DevOps time is wasted on logistics and repetitive tasks. And John, if you talk about multi-cloud, it's not just simple to say, oh, hey, I threw in a Kubernetes layer and therefore I can move from my Azure to my GCP to my AWS. That's not how it works. I have all the underlying things. I have the interface. Um, that tool and user interface knowledge um, is challenging to overcome. Uh, there are some uh, tools like GitLab, of course, that help me span across those environments. Uh, HashiCorp is here at the show, a partner uh, of GitLab. Uh, I was just meeting with them uh, you know, recently, and of course, they're going to spread across the multiple cloud environments. But you know, that is really where, where the meat on the bone is, John, if you talk about multi-cloud and cloud native. Where are these pieces that are going to help customers make sure that I'm not you know, too deeply locked into one environment and still being able to leverage uh, the various services that I might yeah. want to use across multiple Yeah, I clouds. mean, to me, the big takeaways too on the keynote, made my notes here is that what I was impressed with is obviously the transparency uh, that they have is I love the openness. You know, I mean, this whole silo thing is definitely real. You're seeing more and more so open and transparency key. But when you look at what they really have here is the integration story as cloud is forcing that in my opinion. But they announced um, what they call a complete DevOps platform delivered as a single application from manage, plan, create, verify, package, secure, release, configure, monitor, and defend the spectrum of a DevOps platform. So that to me I think is, is the step that needs to be taken. The question I have is, how real is it in your opinion? Uh, is that what a lot of other people are saying that they have? What's your analysis of that um, story, uh, reality, legit, and what's their prospects? Yeah, well, definitely, you know, GitLab has great adoption. The, the, the two pieces, it's the SCM and the CI are the core of what they're doing, and they know that's where people usually kind of walk in the door. Then they kind of land, and they look to expand from that. They, GitLab's made a number of acquisitions, and in 2020, they are going to uh, really double down on making sure that they dig deeper into some of those environments, especially security, planning, and ops, were the three priorities that they had there. So, you know, John, we know when you talk about you, you're trying to be all things to all people, you, there, there are going to be things that you will do well and things that you will, yeah. can do great, but, uh, so it is an audacious goal, and with a broad community. Well, we know you've, re you've reported on this, and we've told stories about it. Is that if there's too many tools in an enterprise, you have this tool shed effect where there's no real platform around it, and I call it a tool shed. But if you have too many tools laying around, they're not cohesively integrated. That's a problem that becomes tool sprawl. So this has become an issue. We saw it in the big data world. You saw unification as a, as a strategy for that. Databricks, for example, is a great example of one company that's, that's taken advantage of that trend. Is there a tool? problem in the dev space that GitLab's taken advantage of. Yeah, absolutely, John. And I think something we're going to dig in deep today, love, we've got a couple of practitioners on, we've got the partners, uh, we've got the executive team from GitLab. John, thank you so much for helping me kick off GitLab to commit, commit 2020 and a massive schedule of yeah. the CUBE coverage uh, yeah. throughout the entire cloud native multi-cloud ecosystems. All right, uh, be sure to check out thecube.net for all of the shows that we will be at in 2020 as well as a tremendous back catalog that you can search. For John Furrier, I'm Stu Miniman. Thank you for watching theCUBE.